<sighs> Hello, this is Halcyon Is Is. This is the Belief Buffet. This is the Monday live broadcast where I share what's going on in my mind, what I've been struggling with or learning from each week at Monday. That's in addition to the daily broadcasts in the morning at 9 a.m. and the gratitude circles in Zoom at noon and 6 and the relentless uploading that I have been doing as inspiration kicks in. Why so much inspiration? Burning Man. And that is what I want to talk about today. So today's Belief Buffet is about Burning Man momentum and final d downloads regarding Burning Man as I approach my last week before I hit the road. First off, I wanted to thank everyone for the positive thoughts and remarks about the Burning Man Bootcamp. Is it available at bootcamp.hugnation.com? There are five videos, four videos, plus a bonus video having to do with relationships on Playa, preparing, things to know about Black Rock City, how to be a good burner, and all sorts of tips and tricks and and, and I think really deep conversations, a little, little, little deeper into how to feel comfortable, especially if it's your first time, but even if you've been for a long time. And I want to give special thanks to uh, Phenomenal, my former partner. We recorded these videos in 2019 when we were together, and it's so beautiful to watch them now and see how, how much chemistry we had and how much we still care about each other. We are still friends and lovers and supporting each other on our current chapters. And uh, it's been touching to revisit our dynamic and I think especially the relationship video, it's neat to see us having very legitimate and real communication, which is important, as you see in context for the burn as we talk about it, but it's really relevant in any relationship. So I hope you get a chance to watch those. If you would prefer to listen to them, they're available as MP3 downloads, and I will work on making those available, but you can always reach out to me and I'll get them to you as best I can. I wanted to address why this is my favorite week of the year. I'm sorry, my second favorite week of the year. Burning Man is my favorite week of the year. Come on. Good thing they don't ask that as like a password retrieval question because anybody could steal my password. My uh, favorite week is Burning Man and the second is the week leading up to it and the weeks leading up to it because this creative momentum starts flowing in me. There's something about the liberation of knowing it's right around the corner. There's a part of me that is afraid of glue gunning something to something or cutting something or committing to something or buying something. I put something in my, my, my shopping basket and I wait, you know, or I, I buy a piece of, prep, uh, of fabric months ago and I keep not sure exactly how I want to use it. But the week before, it's like, dude, either shit or get off the pot. Either use it or you're never going to use it. So I just let myself kind of get a little crazy and reckless because really it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so releasing that perfectionism is to me a beautiful gift of, of the Black Rock City community. This incredible support that you get when you have radical inclusion and, and radical self-expression as part of the, the very principles. That that supportive idea that art is not about good or bad. It's not to be judged. There's no curator at Burning Man. And so it's okay if we make clothing and the seams are jagged or we glue something and there's glue oozing out the side so it's not crisp and perfect. Now, if you make things crisp and perfect, I respect your attention to detail, but personally, sometimes that keeps me from doing something because my precision is lackluster at times. So for example, I'll give you an example of how the creative energy just was flowing through me. Last night, after I got this incredible hat in the mail, which reminded me of a hat that I wore my second year to Burning Man, I had a sparkly silver hat that my brother and I got matching hats. And everybody thought we were sexual partners, even though we were brothers. So I got this hat, but it seems like it might get a little warm. And so I was thinking, how could I put some holes in it? Now, since I just got a new drill, part of my growth into being more of a builder and maker, I'm like, I'll drill holes. And so that didn't work that great. I almost destroyed the hat uh, in the process of drilling it. So then I was thinking, well, how can I 
like punch holes in it. It'd be cool if I had like nice per circular holes. I mean, I could try to cut it with scissors, but you know, that's not going to be, I'm not going to make nice, perfect circles. So a hole punch, but how do I get a hole punch? And so I'm looking online if there's some crafting tool, I couldn't find anything that I'm like, ooh, ooh, an awl, you know, like a leather punching. So I'm like looking for one of those online. And then I'm like, do I really want to order one and buy one just in case it works? And this is the right tool. Oh, I find a really nice one that makes nice thick holes. And, and like, oh, do I want to spend that? And then I was like, oh, this is just a Burning Man hat. You know what would work like an awl? And I start looking around my house. What do I have that's shaped like an awl? Oh, a ballpoint pen. So I started shoving a ballpoint pen through this, ta-da, holes. Now, is that gonna be the kind of precision and crispness that you, Christmas, crispness, which makes it feel like Christmas. Is that the kind of precision that you would expect to see something that you would buy or in a store or perhaps in a gallery? Nah, it's probably a little scrappy, but it's perfect for Burning Man. So I love the liberation. I hope that you are finding ways to surrender to your creativity and let go of your perfectionism if you have it. I, I've had a few people, quite a few people actually, comment on my recent Burning Man videos with criticisms for how I've sold out and how I am making money off, off the community and these videos are just an attempt to, uh, to capitalize and, and commodify. And, I, and I, 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 I wanna make sure that people understand I do not make any money on YouTube. There is no monetization. Any, nothing on my channel has ads on it. I make zero money. I've, I've never made any money on YouTube. Now, do people sometimes watch those videos and then over time say, hey, I would like to work with you professionally? Sometimes, but it's, there's, it's not like a, a pipeline for me. So sure, you can judge me, and but really, I want to spread these ideas. I believe in Burning Man. And so sometimes I even, sometimes I said, you're just rehashing old videos. Yeah, because no one is going to look at the radical inclusion video that I made six years ago. People just don't search and look at YouTube in that way. Now, if they do and they see the old one, great, but I might make a new one. And with that, I'm gonna segue to the next topic, which is radical inclusion. One of the 10 principles. And I think it's important, one, to say that anything I say is just my opinion. I am no, I have no granted authority. I don't even work for the organization. I just like to talk and am passionate about Burning Man. But radical inclusion does not mean that everyone is welcome everywhere. It doesn't mean that everyone can go to Burning Man. Obviously, Burning Man has a scarcity issue. They can only handle so many people in the city. And it requires resources. If you have less than $1,000 to spend on the whimsical participation in something in the desert, you really can't go. So it's not radically inclusive to that extent of radicalness. But it means that it's not just for cool kids or just for artists. It means if you show up and you are a frat boy and you're wearing your cargo pants, no one is going to say, why are you here? Everyone is there. It welcomes the stranger. It also does not mean that everyone is welcome into every area. In your camp, you have areas that you make public and you have areas to make private. You can't just walk into someone's tent. And it's important to remember that. So it also, you do not have to make an event that everyone can participate in. For example, let's say you make a sculpture and it's this tall tower and it's climbable. Someone who is in a wheelchair, not in a wheelchair, there's the right way to say that. Someone who who's, uses a wheelchair, my apologies if I'm getting the wording incorrectly, but if you're differently abled and climbing is difficult, that is not an experience for you. That being said, it is nice to maximize inclusivity if you can. For example, if you have an, a mutant vehicle and you find a way to create a ramp so you can get people using wheelchairs into it, awesome! Is it required? No, but it's awesome. It's a way to pursue, get closer and closer to being radically, more and more radically inclusive. And that is one of the things that motivated Pinkheart to do our ice cream socials in the way that we do. This, I just posted something that I said, I called it a radically inclusive ice cream social because we use coconut milk, vegan ice cream, and gluten-free cones. So it is something that whether you are 
gluten intolerant or whether you are lactose intolerant or you are allergic to dairy, everyone is welcome to our ice cream social. It is inclusive. And someone today, a friend actually was like, hey, I don't want you to get like attacked by the, the anti-woke crowd because your event isn't really radically inclusive. It's really focused just for vegans. And I was like, I don't agree with you. I don't think that's how inclusivity works and what it means in the context of Burning Man. It means that everyone is welcome. It doesn't mean that everybody wants to or everyone likes to do it. It means that we are not closing the door to anyone. Now, of course, if you're allergic to coconuts or you're allergic to any of the ingredients in gluten-free cones, or of course, but it's, we're not 100% inclusive. We're radically inclusive in our attempt to make it more available to everyone. My friend said, now, if you, you know, a vegan restaurant is not radically inclusive because it is just for vegans. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not true. A vegan restaurant is totally inclusive because anyone can eat there. You don't have to be a vegan to eat there. If I offer something and you don't like it or don't want it, that is not me being exclusive. Exclusive. So we are going to have our vegan ice cream social hour hours on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoon at Pink Heart. This year, Pink Heart is at 8 and E. If you're watching this another year, you'll have to look up where we are. And... As long as I'm saying things are going on, we also have my pink ride is Thursday at noon. And it's the highlight of my year. I'll be giving a talk on the meaning of life. I've been making notes about ooh, what are the big lessons for me this year. So I'm going to share all that and then we'll do our, our parade and our ride. Um, I just got a message that said, um, thanks for the videos and the, and the boot camp. I'm sober. Can you give me some advice on how to say no if people offer me drinks? And I was like, oh, great question. You say, no, thank you. Or no, thank you. No, thank you. The same way you can say no to anything, whether that's bacon, whether it is a hug, whether that is a hand job, whether that is uh, an invitation to watch a performance, whether that is someone even saying like, I need help, you can say, no, thank you. No, thank you. I think it is good to practice your tone so that you can actually say thank you and no with, with a little bit of uh, friendliness to it. But really, gifting is not a gift if it's obligation. And you do not have to give an explanation or a reason whatsoever. If someone gives you an alcoholic drink, first they should make sure they say it's alcoholic. Um, and you don't have to explain Oh, I'm not drinking. Oh, I'm sober. Oh, I'm on other substances that don't mix with alcohol. Oh, if my partner smells my breath and they know that I've had that, I'm going to get in trouble. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's how consent works. It's, it's super easy. And ideally, the person in a working consent system, they say, thank you for communicating and holding to you doing what you require to feel good. Carolyn suggesting as a way to say no, say, that is so sweet, but I'm good. Thank you. That is so sweet. Thank you, but I'm good. Or even like someone might say, you know, here's a sticker and you might not have anywhere to put it or you might know that you don't like stickers or you might know that you're afraid that if you, you'll create moop if you drop it. That is sweet. No, thank you. That is so sweet. No, thank you. If somebody is hurt by that, that's their work to do. Oh, I am doing a post burn integration group on Facebook for the 30 days, not the 30 days, but we're going to start like a week after the, the temple burn. And you can join at decom.hugnation.com. It'll take you to a Facebook group. It's free. It is uh, a way for us to support each other and have Zoom calls and a Facebook group of assignments and ways to, to process what we've experienced and how we can integrate it into the default world. So I hope that you will join me. You do not have to go to Burning Man, by the way. You just have to be in the spirit of seeking to be more radically self-expressed in the world and be willing to be supportive of others and courageous. And we'll help each other. I am so ready to be in Black Rock City, but I'm also so energized by this road to Burning Man 
and this reminder of the community of Burning Man. And I'm so blessed that I get to be a part of physical communities where people have been touched by the 10 principles and bring into their lives, as well as digital communities. And that's you know one of the reasons why I do everything I do is because I recognize that Burning Man is not a place. It is 10 principles and a community and uh, a movement. It is amongst the most significant and important things that I know of that are happening in the world. And so if you have a chance to participate in any way, a regional, a, a the digital BlackRock uh, BRCVR, a... Uh, a community that has been touched by it. For example, my Hug Nation Gratitude Circles. Most people there are either are burners. Whether they have gone to a Burning Man event or not, they are seeking to be that version of themselves that is radically self-expressed, that is radically inclusive, that is um, finding ways to find their gifts and share them with the world, and to work to be supportive of others as they are pursuing that path of authenticity and creativity and expression. So... I know I sometimes am a broken record because I know these things to be true for those that are open to them. I know them to be helpful to those that are seeking them. And I think part of my dharma is sharing these things as best I can because I think the, the better and the faster that we go from what is going on to, oh, wow, and then being an ambassador of that in the world, the more effective this is as a, a tool for world changing. Not that the world needs changing, cough, cough, but it's a, it's a good practice to see how can we move the dial towards kindness, authenticity, and truth. So, I love you. I'll see you at home. It's always saying, I admire your ability to rise above the icky comment. I actually don't get hit too hard by them. I, I said, when I respond, I usually say, could you explain how you think I'm making money off this? Because I just think there's a misunderstanding. And so if I am, am doing something that is making it confusing, I would like an opportunity to change what I'm doing to avoid that confusion. But if you say, you selfish bastard, you're you know monetizing this community, I don't, it doesn't bother me because I know that's not true. Now, years ago, I did do a post integration group that I charged money for, and that I wasn't sh that that required some justification. I still felt good about it because I feel like decommodification has to happen at the event. It doesn't have to happen before or after. Like I can hire people to make meals for me and freeze them and bring them to the playa. I can hire a mechanic to work on my car before and after the playa. I can hire someone to clean my car after the playa. And so you should be able to hire a therapist or a coach to help you integrate after the playa. So I don't feel any guilt or problems about that. But it is something that I felt required some explanation, which is why if somebody thought that I was monetizing, I'm like, oh, maybe I need to clarify that this things that I am doing are all free. They're a gift, totally inspired by the very things that I'm trying to share. Chelsea saying, is Burning Man a satanic ritual? It definitely is. Additionally, most people open their auric fields with drugs and sex all in one place that leaves them extremely vulnerable to entity implants. Well, do you feel like I am a satanic or that I have, am possessed by entities? Because of anyone, I am probably has done more down those paths that you just described of anyone. And so if you find what I am in the world to be an asset, then I am i don't think we're talking about the same things. Uh, Burning Man is a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Have you been to Burning Man? Have you been to Wall Street? I think that you are misunderstanding where human culture is uh, going off the rails. So wherever you are, 
Give yourself a squeeze. And as you feel yourself being held, let it be my arms holding you and the arms of all those that are here. And let yourself squeeze me and everyone and feel ourselves sinking into this place of oneness. This place beyond our thoughts and our identities and our labels into this beautiful, pure humanity. This flawed and weird and wacky humanity. Forgiving ourselves and forgiving others as we do the best we can with what we got. Let's feel ourselves in that oneness as we take a deep breath in and give a squeeze and feel ourselves being squeezed. <sighs> On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all of you, thank you for being here for this hug nation, this, this hug, this belief buffet. Thank you for being you in the world and encouraging us all to do the same. If you're headed to Black Rock City, I'll see you at home. Pink Heart is at 8 and E. The Pink Ride is Thursday at noon. If we cross paths while we're out there and you see me, please say hello. And please introduce yourself, even if we've met before. My brain is blurry and, and damaged and my memory. And so remind me that we've met. If you want to remind me how we know each other, if you say, oh, I actually show up at the afternoon broadcast sometimes. Or... I called you a Satanist or something. I would love to connect and have a chance to hug. Even if I'm busy, I'll, I, will, I will do my best to make time as soon as I can because it's important for me to, to have a hug with you.